Hey guys, I'd like to talk to you about my interruptible event-based dialogue approach in Vice. Over the years of gaming, one of the things that really bothered me and put me out of the game was the dialogue not reacting to the environment and what's happening. One particular example I can remember was in the game Prince of Persia 2 Thrones. As much as I loved the game, the conversations between the prince and the dark prince while I was fighting enemies made me lose track of the conversation and that part of the story. So I wanted to come up with a solution using the wise middleware, and this solution has become the end product. To come up with a usable script, I used one of my old game design documents. In the game, the player plays as a thief who has been cursed, and had her soul bonded with an old evil mage where she needs to survive in a different world than hers. The playing style and choices of the player determines if the thief and the mage like each other or not. Since this is one of the main topics in the game, the dialogues need to be written in order to give the state of the protagonist. This brings out a few challenges. The characters can talk anytime and something can happen while they are in the conversation. There are no mimics to support the dialogue as they are internal conversations. And the characters should react differently to the same type of situation depending on the fact that they like each other or not. Now, aside from the great voice actors, I needed to provide a system that can manage these three aspects. So I followed three principles to achieve that. We can see the dialogues as in the script of a movie with each character having cues, so that when a cue changes, so will the character. We can also control the flow of a dialogue with events and parameters, just like we can control the sound elements. Finally, telephone conversations show us that, even though we don't use mimics, we can transfer our opinion about the conversation by our audible reactions while the other person is talking. To manage this, I decided not to use the interactive dialogue system that Vice provides, as it felt lackluster to what I was trying to achieve, and use the basic switch containers so that I can control the flow. The reason that I don't use sequence containers is that I will have to go back first in the sequence if there is an interrupt in the dialogue, which I will show in a bit. So I set up a switch called dialogue queue to keep track of which queue we are in currently. I also want to keep track of who is talking at the time. For that, I made another switch called person talking, which will see its benefits in a bit. I also set up a game parameter called corruption level, which basically defines if the thief and the mage like each other or not for our purposes. The higher the corruption level, the more aligned they start to think. Using this game parameter, I decided to have three flows for each dialogue. Low corruption, where the thief and the mage don't like each other. Medium corruption, where the thief starts to think more about her benefits rather than against the mage. And high corruption, where the thief and the mage start to think alike and almost become one person. I can't see how medallion will benefit us. How will the medallion benefit us? How can the medallion benefit us? If it's a conversation about a previous mission, this means that we can branch up to six different conversations with each corruption level and the outcome of the mission. One thing to include, for the high corruption dialogues, I also set up a real-time parameter control so that I can add the mage's voice onto the thief's voice to have the effect of them becoming one whenever thief talks. We won't help the people. We won't help the people. Now that I could branch out to conversations, depending on the character's relationship and the situations they are in, I needed to tackle the interrupt functionality. To achieve this, I recorded and branched out different interrupts for each character, depending if they like each other or not. I also needed another parameter for the interrupt, which is stress level, that controls what intensity the interrupt has. Low being a little monster attacking, while high is when the player is in a very intense danger. There are spies around us. Should we invite the eavesdroppers to join us? There are spies around us. I also needed to keep track of who's talking at the time, so that I can have the other person interrupt the conversation when it's needed. We'll also have to return to the conversation just as we interrupt it. Again, I branched them out to three corruption levels for each character without taking the stress level into account as returning will be done when the intensity returns to zero. The one little tricky thing here is that regardless of whose turn it is in the conversation, both characters can return to it. 
One can say anyway and keep going, or the other may encourage the other person to continue. Are you prepared for more? What were you saying before? This also lets us increase the interactivity of the conversation. To increase the interactivity even more, I also added some efforts which can trigger randomly after the other person's cue starts, just like a telephone conversation. Again, I branched them out to three for each character depending on the corruption level. People react differently to the other people's suggestions based on their own opinion of them. So, in low corruption it can be a sarcastic laugh, while in high corruption it can be something like mm-hmm, <laughs> haha, encouraging the other person to keep talking. Mm. Ha! Of course. So a dialogue event generally will go like this. Set up the person talking parameter before the dialogue and reset the dialogue queue to zero. Increase the dialogue queue by one and play the respective switch container and add a small random chance of an effort to the other person. We can use the silence object inside the random container to ensure that small chance. If there is an interrupt coming, let the other person have an interrupt event to cut the conversation and decrease the dialogue queue by one, so that we can get back to the conversation later. When the intensity gets back to zero, return to the conversation by playing a return event. Then, use the conversation event which adds one to the dialogue queue and plays the respective element and keep doing all the steps until the conversation ends. To show this event structure, I use the wise post event function to create the whole dialogue. This function gives me the ability to create big and timed events to prototype, or use it as a dynamic mixing tool if I need. These event structures let me test the outcome without any ties into the game. Now I'll show some prototypes to demonstrate this functionality. We need it. I can't see how a medallion will benefit us. <sighs> I'm not going to look for a medallion for no reason. It can help us become more powerful. You don't even know where it is, do you? Of course I do. Then tell me. It's in the throne room. How can a medallion help us become more powerful? It's not just a medallion. It's also a key. A key? To what? To a portal. A portal to where? To the enchanted world of Irvesa. Can you get it for me? How will the medallion benefit us? Oh no. Retrieve it first. What's so special about it? This is not the time to reveal that. Then where is it? It's in the throne room, well protected. You should be able to feel it with your powers when you are close enough. I'm not going after it unless I know why we need it. It opens a portal. What's in there? All my incantations. And where can we find it? We need that medallion. Why? It is the key to opening a portal to the enchanted world of Irvesa. You know you want to. How can the medallion benefit us? Oh, it's not a normal medallion. Where can we find it? We'll feel its presence clearly when we get closer to the throne room. And you know it's there? Oh, yes. What does it do? It opens a portal to the enchanted world of Irvesa. And what can we find there? Powerful magic. That medallion will be in our hands in no time. Don't you think being merely a thief is keeping you down? I have skills that you don't, and I'm happy using them. You're scared, aren't oh, you? I've lived on my own long enough to know how to survive mm, without power. But look around. We're not on your world anymore. Just because we're sharing a body- We're continuing this later. Anyway, just because we're sharing a body doesn't mean you're in charge. This human body is weak. <gasps> then leave it and return to the abyss. Thank you for watching my interruptible dialogue approach in Vice.